Hello, my name is Sean, and I recently got a chance to see an early viewing of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I hope that's the name of the movie. Oh, God. Into this. Okay, yes, that is the name of the movie. Spider-Man. <sighs> now, you might be wondering, since this is the first animated Spider-Man movie, if you have to read any of the comic books or see any of the movies first. And I'm here to tell you, no, you can go into this movie completely blind. In fact, you don't even necessarily have to know who Spider-Man is to enjoy this movie, which is really weird because this is about the secondary Spider-Man and Ultimate Spider-Man, Miles Morales, not Peter Parker. Now, I say it's about it, but it's really not really about Spider-Man, um, Miles Morales Spider-Man, from the Ultimate Universe, as this movie is all about the multiverse. And so there's many different Spider characters in this. This is a version of Miles Morales that's not quite from the Ultimate Universe. Not that it really matters, because it's anyone can walk into this movie and watch it and enjoy it. Now, before I get too far into this review, I just want to say one thing. There was something in the trailers that worried me and I wanted to make sure I saw the movie early just so I can see if it translated onto the big screen the way it translated onto the small screen. And that's the weird frame rate that the cartoon seemed to have when it was in the trailers. And while it was less jarring, it's still there where it's not a consistent frame rate that looks fluid. I think they did this as a type of style or artistic take on it, maybe as if it's like stop motion when you're reading a comic. And it's going like that and that and that instead of a fluid thing that you would watch on a movie theater in 2018. And while I see where they were going with this, I do not think they were successful in doing this where it wasn't jarring. Because sometimes they'll be uh, the characters will be animated and it's like a little slow, you know but things in the background will be much smoother, and it made one of the people that I went to the movie with kind of motion sick, a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So I will mention that. Other than that, artistically, I love this movie. I love the narrative, that it, how they deal with the narrative. I love everything. This is hands down one of the best Spider-Man movies that I have ever seen. Now, I will say, I came into this movie with a little bias, because... I how I don't like the idea of Marvel not owning Spider-Man. I don't like Amy Pascal of Pascal Pictures, who's in charge of the Spider-Man property. You might remember her next to um, next to the guy in charge of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and how they were kind of going back and forth on whether Venom was in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because Spider-Man: Homecoming was in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. She also was in charge of the Ghostbusters movie, and I didn't like her take on that and how she treated that property. So, that being said, though, I came in with bias. I left very happy. I will say that. Now, the voice cast, I don't know if I can, if I remember any of the voices other than one of the characters, Spider-Man Noir, was played by Nicolas Cage. They have such an interesting take on every single Spider-Man, but they get what it means to be Spider-Man, and that's very important. One of the things that's always hammered on in um, the comic books, the movies, well, maybe not the movies, but video games, is that Spider-Man sacrifices a lot to be Spider-Man for the greater good. And they understood Peter Parker. I believe they understood Miles Morales pretty well in his world. And I don't know much about Spider-Gwen, or Spider-Woman, as she's called here, which is weird, because for some reason I thought her name was Ghost Spider, I, I don't know why. But all the characters they seem to get and understand. And this is a great Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man movie. I'll say it again. Spider-Man movie. There's so many Spider-Men. But they get what it means to be Spider-Man. Now, is this the best superhero movie? Maybe not. That being said, though... It's really, really good for what it is. And you know what? If Marvel refuses to tell these smaller stories about sp characters specific because 
They're too interested in, oh, Ant-Man, he needs Falcon in there. He needs such this, this, that, and the other. Then maybe I'm okay with some of the properties staying a little bit away from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If we can have Marvel Cinematic Spider-Man, and we can have Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse Spider-Man, Spider-Men, people, maybe that's not so bad. And for a comic book fan, because that's what I used to be, a comic book fan before I was a Marvel Cinematic Universe fan, maybe that's okay. I mean, the idea that I'm saying that's okay, they got me there. And that's the biggest bias against these movies. You'll see the uh, Fred Savage comment in the Once Upon a Deadpool trailer about, yeah, you're Marvel, but Marvel by way of Fox. And it's like, that's the big stigma that most people had, is they couldn't be part of a bigger thing. And Amy Pascal, like her lumper, she's trying to make this Spider-Man thing into a bigger thing. I also wanted to watch it because it's animated. And there's so few animated movies that are not done by Disney. And I like the animated style, but it kind of looked like it was from a video game a little bit. Like, well-polished, but at a weaker frame rate. And... I hope they do a version where they have a more consistent frame rate. And I know that sounds crazy, but remember, we had a version of Ghostbusters 2016 that had different jokes. You know, not better jokes, but different. So, fingers crossed on that one. But if you were hoping that your favorite Spider-Man character shows up that wasn't in the trailer, then I have bad news. Um... Spider-Girl from the Marvel Comics 2 universe is not in this movie. Neither is, I don't know, Six-Armed Spider-Man, Man-Spider. This isn't one of those, oh, Scarlet Spider's going to show up for two seconds, you know, so many Spider-Men. You see, like, a lineup of Spider-Man suits, and you see the main cast of Spiders, and there might be a little bit more, but not a mu much more, which, to be honest kind of helps them tell the story that they wanted to tell, and so it's forgivable, and maybe shouldn't have been expected. This isn't the Clone Saga or something, you know? This is Spider-Verse, which, once again, named after a comic book, you do not have to read that comic book. Do, don't worry, you do not have to read the comic book. It's fine. It's great. It doesn't follow any particular comic book. It, it, it closely resembles the ultimate Miles Morales stuff, so if you know anything about him and his characters and his universe, you'll get a gist of what's going on before the other moviegoers do. But you don't need to know what, however many years of Spider-Man. It's fine. You're going in this. It's fine. And that's where I'm going to leave this. It, it was a very fun movie. I'm glad I saw it. And I'm looking forward to more of animated into the Spider-Verse Spider-People? Yeah, that's weird to say in this day and age, but... You know what? Sony, make my Marvel. That's an old catchphrase. You would have had to have read some comic books. Make mine Marvel? I don't know. Anyways, I will catch you all next time. If you like this video, let me know, and I will make maybe one about Once Upon a Deadpool, which I'm seeing tomorrow. Catch you all next time.